Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is going to do a Hunter x Hunter video right now. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because there hasn't been, there hasn't been a lot of Hunter x Hunter material for the past few months since Togashi has been on hiatus for God knows how long, you know, playing that Dragon Quest. So, I mean, I'm assuming it. So, that being said, I decided to do an ARC overview. So, this is going to be the overview of the latest ARC, the Election ARC, or the Gon Revival ARC, whatever you want to call it. it I'm going to call it the Election ARC, because that to me makes more sense. That being said, one more time, this is going to be the Hunter x Hunter Election ARC overview. Now, when it comes to this ARC, this ARC is a good ARC, and it's a very good ARC. But even though it's not heavy on the action, there are very few action scenes overall. I believe, I believe that um, when it came to the actual action, the only scenes that were relevant were Killua being chased by Sabon and Hisoka. And a few scenes after that with, uh, yeah, and then of course there was the, the Hisoka versus uh, Goto fight and that was it. So that's pretty much it when it comes to action, when it comes to this arc. Most of this arc is talking, expo exposition. It's basically just talking, and it's a lot of reveals, and it's a lot of uh, plots and twists and turns, and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But basically, overall, it is a good arc, a very good arc of Hunter x Hunter. Now, the way it's going to work out for this overview is that I'm going to do a summary. After the summary, is going to be a few thoughts on some things that I really enjoyed about this arc, and some thoughts about stuff that I didn't like about this arc, and then after that, it's going to be the overall rating. Now, that being said, let's get started. First of all, this arc starts off with the introduction of the 12 Zodiac, alright? And the only three Zodiac of, of relevance are going to be Gin, who is the boar, who is Gon's father, uh, Cheadle, who is the dog, and then uh, Parstar, who is the mouse. Now, the most relevant of the three Zodiac, obviously, is going to be Parstar. Or Parista. And this guy... This guy was... Ah, he was he, he was very good. He was very, very good, to say the least, right? He was very smart, very conniving. He planned ahead. So many steps ahead, it wasn't even funny. He already knew how the, how this election would turn out just by again saying, Gorn won't die. He already knew. And that's crazy. So, or at least he, he had the general idea of how the arc would turn out. Just by again saying a few words at the beginning of the arc, which was crazy. So, I mean, and honestly, guy, like, he's a very, he's a very frightful character. He really is a very frightful character. Because it's kind of like, he, we don't see him when it comes to combat ability, but the way he plans stuff out, the fact that he knows these things and how he can make these deductions so many steps ahead, it's very scary stuff. So, props to him. And then after this, we get the rules for the election. And when it comes to the rules, um, the only rules that I think, the only rules that I know that are relevant is the first rule, where every hunter is their, every hunter has, well, it's like, basically every hunter has a chance. At the, at the beginning of the arc, Every hunter in the, in the organization has a chance of winning, and each hunter gets one vote, and then you can vote for, and then you can vote vote for who, who, whoever you want to. Uh, the rule number two I know is that if the candidate with the most votes hasn't achieved a majority of the votes in the first election, then they repeat the election in order to get that majority vote. And then the third rule is if the voting rate is less the 95%, then they have to redo it again. So, I believe in this arc, there was a total of, I think, five or six elections. I'm not too sure on that number. But there were a fair amount of elections, overall. And then, of course, in early on, early on in this arc, during the reveal of the election and the Zodiac, we see that they are having, like, the first election. And who winds up showing up there but Hisoka? And Hisoka... Man, Hisoka. <laughs> this guy is messed up to say the least. Ah, I'll get to that later, later on, because I want to talk about something about him and Alumi. 
but whatever. Um, Hisoka comes in there, and he doesn't even care. He has no intention of actually voting for this election. A lot of hunters didn't really give a shit. Like, at first, Leoro didn't show up. Gon couldn't show up. Kill didn't care. Um, Alumi didn't give a shit. Uh, Kurapika wasn't even there, so, you know. And that's, just, like, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to hunters that didn't show up. So, I'm just saying. Now, what happens here is that when Hisoka goes to the first uh, election, he talks to Alumi. And then Alumi reveals what's going on with the whole entire situation with Killua and Gon. He explains how Hisoka had missed the whole entire Chimera Ant arc in general. And that's, and that's the thing, too, because I bet you that Hisoka would have had a ball. He would have had a fucking ball. If he fought some Chimera Ants. He really, he really would have. Because this guy loves fighting. I mean, even though he did say... I believe he said something along the lines of... That's not my style. But I'm not too sure on that one. But basically... The major reason why Hisoka and Illumi are in this arc... Is so they can catch a Luka... And kill a Luka. Or... or yeah, that's the initial goal. And basically, this leads to, to like the second portion of this summary... With, sorry, uh, which is that Killua, she, uh, well, correct, she, wow. Killua wants to use a, a Luka to erase Gon's net. And this is, I think, yeah, this is like one of the two major functions of this arc. The first function is the election itself. The second function is Killua's goal to try and revive Gon from his net, from his cursed net. Now, the thing about this is that he goes to his home, talks to his father, asks his father about a Luca, can I use a Luca? After some, after some convincing, his father says yes, and then, and then they go see a Luca. And a Luca's kind of weird, cause, well, her, her slash his, cause it's not too, sh I'm not too sure as to whether or not, uh, as to whether or not a Luca is a guy or a girl. At the beginning, they call him a guy, but then Luca turns to a girl later on. It's kind of like, really? I, like, I'm not too sure. So, what happens here is that there's a set of rules. And as far as I know, or as far as I remember, the rules are that if you say yes three times, you get a wish. And if you say no, because they basically well, what's going to happen is that a Luca, she pesters a person. If she has these pestering, so she'll say like, can you carry me? Can you, uh, you know, can you carry me? Can you, uh, like, walk, like, you know, like, like, play catch with me or something of that nature? And this, and she's still a child, so, you know. And the thing is that if you say yes to three of those pesterings, then she will grant you a wish. Now, depending on how big that wish is, the pesterings will either decrease or increase when it comes to magnitude. So... For example, there's a person here in this arc, when they ask a Luca a wish, they ask for a billion dollars, like, make me a billionaire. And then the next set of pesterings is very extreme. Like, can I get your liver? Can I get your spine? And so on and so forth. So it's very extreme shit. And the thing is, if you do not answer her pesterings four times, then you and someone you love will die. And that's the way it works for a majority of this arc until we find out later on that there are other sets of rules that apply to Aluka's whole entire scheme. But Aluka in general is just these rules, all right? You say yes three times, you get a wish. The bigger the wish, the worse the pesterings. If you don't complete the pesterings and you say no four times, then you and someone close to you dies or someone you love dies. And that's the way it works. And I believe it was something along the lines of when it came to the billionaire thing, the pesterings that couldn't be completed after that, I think they killed around like 67 people. And they died in really fucked up ways. I mean, really fucked up ways. Their bodies got contorted and twisted into like rope knots. I was like, okay, you know, like it was really extreme shit. And... Illumi sees the danger in this. He sees the danger in this. And he knows that Killua is going to put his his body and his life on the line in order to save Gon. And Killua does not want that to happen. Because Gon freaks, went through some crazy shit. And the burden 
that he, and he fears that the wish is, he fears that the wish itself is going to have an insane backlash. That's that's Illumi's main fear for a majority of the art. And then here comes the next portion, which is of course um, Aluka. What happens is that well, first of all, he reveals that Aluka calls the other because um yeah no 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 not Aluka uh Killua yeah Killua he reveals. That Luca has two sides: the regular Luca, and then the other side, the darker-eyed side. And this is called uh, uh, Nanika. Yeah, Nanika, meaning nothing. So basically, what happens is that uh, a Luca and, and Kilo make their escape, and well, they do this by putting Kilo's mother on the line. They put Kilo's mother on the line, meaning that. I believe it was something like, yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, uh, Killua says to Nanika, if we don't leave this mountain in 30 minutes, then kill mother. So clearly, Killua wants to escape. But what happens here is that he escapes the mountain, but then he gets tailed by bodyguards. Well, not uh, butlers. Butlers, yeah. The butlers have to watch him, because apparently he has a certain level restriction on him throughout the entire arc, since he escaped with Aluka. So what happens is that... He's being watched by Sabone. The only ones that I remember are Sabone and uh, and Goto. And uh, oh yeah, Goto, and that's it. And then comes Leorio, which is one of the biggest highlights of this arc by far. Son, Leorio, for the motherfucking win. Leorio pulled out the stops. Leorio was beast. Leorio was hot. He was hot. He was fired. Okay. What happened was is that Leorio. He is there, he's trying to, he's trying to talk to Killua, because Killua and Leorio are communicating at some point, and then he's walk and then he's, he's at the hospital with Gon, or where Gon is at, and so is that one guy, um, uh, uh, Maro, or Moru, I think that's his name, the guy with the big ass smoke pipe, I think it's Maru, I'm not too sure, I want to say it's Maru, but that being said, they're at the hospital watching Gon. And then Leorio is trying to contact people. He contacts Killua. And he, he, he knows that Killua's on the way with something in, in order to save Gon from this, from this disaster. But Leorio is really pissed off that he can't reach Killua. I mean, that he, uh, he can't reach Kurapika. And then what happens is that he decides to go over to the election and face off against Gin. Because Gin, Gin is, you know, Gon's father. So he decides, you know what, you're his dad, and he's talking to everyone, he's, he's speaking to like an entire crowd, while the Zodiacs are up there, like with, like with their speech, and he's speaking to the entire crowd, he's like, you should be there for your son, what are you doing? And then Gin is fucked up, cause Gin's like, well, did my son ask me to be there? And Leoro gets pissed off, and then this is really cool, cause then we see Leoro's net, and what it is, is it's a version of admissions net. He punches through a desk and then all of a sudden it's like the desk breaks and all of a sudden a little black sphere appears underneath Gin and an arm comes out of that sphere and punches Gin right in the chin and everyone's like holy shit Leorio for the motherfucking win and then all of a sudden during the second election he gets mad votes mad votes People want Leoro to win, and that's cra and that was really cool. That was really, really cool. So props to Leorio for being a badass in this arc, straight up. And then comes um, okay, and after that comes again Illumi and Hisoka stuff. Where oh man, these guys. <sighs> what happens here is that Illumi he decides to go all out, all right? Because Killua refuses. To give a Luca to a Lumi, so he decides. You know what? We're gonna go all out, and he has these. Uh, he 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 uses these needle humans in order in order to do his bidding for him. And he Soka goes down on the assault. He Soka goes on the assault, and they wind up. Uh, at some point, they wind up because what happens is that because Kelly was in a car driving the car. Well, not driving the car, but the butlers are, are driving the car, and then and then. Illumi uses his human needle guys to drive a truck into the car. The car goes flying off a mountain. The car blows up. 
everyone's fine though. And then what happens after that is that Killua uses his his god speed or his lightning speed to escape the butlers and Hisoka and uh Illumi. And then Sabone, she goes on the pursuit of Killua, while Goto faces off against Hisoka. And the thing here is that um, oh, but I do remember that, I do remember that even though he was using his god speed, or his lightning speed, uh, Killua, he does get outbeaten by Subon and the other brothers, cause she can transform. I believe that Subon is using a form of materialization then, where she transforms into like a vehicle. So, so at first she transformed into like a super motorcycle. And then after that, it was like a like a jet plane of some kind. But basically, they beat Killua to the uh, air balloon stations. And then Illumi or Hisoka and Illumi track down the air balloon and so on and so forth. But before that, there is the fight between Hisoka and Gon, and I mean he Hisoka and Goto. And this fight, this nigga Hisoka, he loves he loves decapitation. He loves that shit. Seriously. He keeps on killing dudes with fucking decapitation. Like fucking... He kills two people at, that we know of. He kills... um, He kills Goto. And he kills Teradine, the leader of the Serene group. Or the... Uh, or, or um, the Serene group. He kills them both by using decapitation. And I was like, wow. Okay. You know, like, seriously. Like... Meow. Just cutting dudes' heads off. I mean, he likes that. I, I guess so. But the fight between him and Goto, it was a solid fight. It was, it really was a solid fight. I mean, I was, I was expecting Goto to win, but him dying was kind of like you know, it's kind of a shame because I could see him being, I don't know. I just kind of like him. And then after that, what happens is that uh, you know he dies, and then Illumi and Isoka go on the trail. They find the balloons and they track down Subone. They use her monitor to track down Killua and Aluka, cause through their mother. It's kind of weird, but, but basically, there's a camera. Cause Subone has like one of those, uh, one, one of those like, uh, like one of those like one eye glasses things, and there's a camera in that one eye glasses thing, and that camera relays a video to the uh, to the to the Zoldic, uh, home base family, and. Yeah, yeah, basically, it it gives a message to the Zaldic fucking household, and their mom knows this, and she relays the video back to Illumi. That's the way it works, and that's how, and that's how, uh, that, that's how Illumi is able to stay ahead of Kilda One and Luca at the end of the day. And then, after that, what happens is that we get introduced, we get introduced to the, uh, to the Saren group. Of hunters, cause these guys want votes. As the, cause throughout the entire course of this, the election is still going on, and these guys want votes. And what happens is that they decide, you know what? We know that Hisoka and Illumi are causing havoc and chaos, so we're gonna go in there and we're gonna try and kill Hisoka and Illumi, so we can attain votes for Teradane and the group. However, this fails. Why does it fail? Because Hisoka kills off, like, that one guy, and then he kills off Teradane himself, and then he says, fuck y'all. And, of course, they use the Needle Humans by Illumi, which, by the way, they do everything. The Needle Humans is that when he sticks a needle into, like, like, like your brain socket, you will have to obey his every will. Like, when Illumi says something, you have to do it. By no other means, you must do that to the best of your ability. So that's the way it works. And he uses these people... In order to outwit Teradane, and they want him getting like Teradane dies off, and the Saren group is now no more. So fuck him, alright? Next after this is of course we know that Illumi catches uh Killua. And then what happens is that Killua reveals another ability of Aluka, or uh, I should say Nanika. And apparently Nanika, she's very good at healing. No correction. Flip it around. Flip it around. She is very good at destroying, but when it comes to healing, she's not a good healer. When she has to be in physical contact in order to heal someone, which is why Killua was so gung ho on bringing her to Gon. 
if that wasn't the case, then he could have made the wish at the Zaldic family base, and then going would going would have been fine. So basically, you know, and then you know, he he talks about how he talks about how uh, Nanika is a very kind-hearted, uh, you know, kind-hearted thing, thing. Yeah, call it a thing, right? And uh, that's it. And um, oh yeah, and I forgot. Um, Alumi lets them pass after hearing the news that. Aluka doesn't have to have a backlash when it comes to healing. He lets he lets Killua and Aluka pass, so he can heal Gon. So Killua can go heal Gon. And of course, the next thing after this is going to be the final election of the entire election arc, which was good because it was kind of like okay, well, no people were allowed to leave the room until the election was over. Leorio had a speech, like, he had a pretty, like, he was saying dumb shit about, like, jacking off and, and bitches and so on and so forth, but it was still moving, and people decided to, you know, and basically, this gives Leorio a majority of the votes, instead of, uh, instead of a Pyrestone, so, you know, it was a change of pace, because normally, when it came to elections, it was always Pyrestone who was on top all the fucking time, so, all the time, he really was, so, Leorio got on top for, like, one election, and then... From there it goes on. And then before that, what happens is that um as this final election is taking place, what happens is that they do the first vote count, and then Leorio, he gets the mo he gets the majority of votes, but the vote percentage did not get past ninety-five percent. So they need to do the vote again. And during this point in time, Aluka begins to heal going. And all of a sudden there's a huge Nen power surge. And everyone feels this shit. Well, everyone who's aware of Nen, like like, like top tier guys, they are aware of the power surge of Nen, including Pariston. So what happens here, and this is where his plan comes into play. At some point, he decides to stall the election because he has the feeling that Gon is healed. And if Gon is healed, then Leorio has no purpose in being in this election since the only reason why Leorio is there in the first place is because he wants to utilize the organization to their fullest abilities in order to help Gon survive. That's the main gist of it. I mean, in all honesty, Leorio didn't want to be there in the first place. So, and what happens is that Pariston, he uses this opportunity to wait and stall for time by talking about the, the Zodiac Commandments and how they should be changed and so on and so forth until, well, no, the Hunter Commandments. And then until, of course, uh... Until, uh, until Gon comes in. He comes into the actual whole entire, like, um, uh, shit. He comes into the whole entire, like, setting. He dives in, like, I'm okay. And then Patterson, he's like, fucking, you know, well, I knew it was gonna happen, you know, because I already knew shit, because I'm mad fucking smart. And then, it was really cool when we see Gon and Gin meet, because Gin was there too, just chilling. And we see how Gin treats his kids, like, really nonchalant. He's like, you know, he, like, he, like, cause, like, he tells Gon to go somewhere. And then Gon's like, okay. And people are pissed off, like, what the fuck are you doing? He's your son, go fucking help him out, you know, and, like, like all, all that shit. So it was really funny. And then after that, we see that after Leorio loses the drive to become the chairman, Pariston becomes the chairman, obviously. And then what happens after that is that he steps down. After all this shit. He steps down, and he makes Cheeto the president. And she's pissed off. She's really pissed off. And then he's like, all I want to do was play. That's all I want to do. He, he wanted to play with, uh, with Natiro. And he couldn't because of all this shit. And because he died. So he was really upset. And he said that if he sees that this organization, the Hunter organization, if he sees it getting boring then he himself will come back and play for real. So, you know, Pariston, he's, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's doing some shit. He's doing some shit. And, of course, I mean, he's not done yet, because we see it at the end of the chapter. I mean, at the end of the arc. But after that, what happens is that uh, we see Nanika uh, going fine, and then Illumi meets Killua. He tells Killua to, give, to hand over Aluka, because I want to utilize her powers for evil shit. Killua says no, fuck off. 
Then he makes Nanika teleport Alumi back to home base. And then he tells Nanika never to come out again. And this was why, and the reason why he did that was because he wanted to keep Aluka safe. He wanted to make sure that Aluka was going to be safe for the rest of her life. But she gets pissed off. Aluka's like, no, 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 no. Nanika is a part of me. And you upset her, and then you upset me. And, and, and apparently, not, apparently, Nanika was crying inside of her. So, and then he, and then he tells Killua that if you're gonna protect me, then you need to protect, then you need, then you need to protect Nanika as well. So that's her whole entire thing right there. And then after that, Killua apologizes, and then we all see like, uh, kind of like, kind of like a, you know, like a weird little freeze frame in the story. Where it was kind of like the election's over, everyone's chilling, uh, getting like sh getting like champagne bottles for Natero and so on and so forth, and then we see at some point that after the talk with with the koala, which was very deep shit. I mean that that was very deep shit. The koala was deep as fuck. But what I will say is that after the koala talk, after the whole entire thing. We're talking to Kaito, the girl version of Kaito. Well, Killua and Gon, well, the, basically they all separate ways. They all separate paths. What happens here is that Gon goes to his father on something called the World Tree. Killua and an Aluka, they go and explore the world, apparently. And Leorio is doing his doctor thing. We do know that Kurapika is now collecting the eyes of his clan. We see that, and he's in a dark-ass room, and we see him staring at jars of the eyes of his clansmen. And I'm not too sure if that's, I'm not too sure if those eyes are actually real, because I do know that the, the Phantom Troop, they had some person who could make fake men and fake items, so I'm not too sure on that one. But, uh, so I, I'm hoping that they're real, because it was a, quite a bunch of them. And if Killua got all fake ones, that would suck ass. That would suck major ass. So, I'm, I'm just saying. Um, now, I do know that he goes up to the world tree. Yeah, right here's the most, yeah, right here's the most key part, in my opinion, the best portion of this entire arc. The reveal of the outside, the dark continent, the new world, whatever you want to call it. And apparently, and this is Gin's whole entire thing. What happens here is that Gon goes up to the world tree, and then Gin talks about how he wanted to become a hunter, and or what, or the reason why he became a hunter, and then he explains how this world tree, this world tree, like it's a really big tree, and apparently this world tree is a baby tree. Apparently, the real world trees that exist on the outside are so large that their roots are mountain regions are mountain range, ranges themselves and the trunk and the top it breaks the atmosphere and it continues to grow that's a crazy tree i mean fuck tree of might that, that that's a crazy ass tree right there right there, that's a crazy ass tree so apparently it uses the magma in volcanoes as energy like it's no <laughs> that's a crazy ass tree now, uh, what I will say is that, oh wait, and the last, and then the last portion, of course, is Beyond the Tiro. At the end of the fucking arc, on the last chapter, Beyond the Tiro comes out, and he is with this nation called the, uh, K-Kin Nation, and he wants to go to the fucking New World. On some One Piece shit, he wants to go to the New World, and this speech is fucking epic, man. He was like, I mean, the only portion I remember of this speech is we see his mouth, and he's like, I will take you there, and I was like, oh shit, okay, you know, mad hype, so, and that's the end of the entire arc right there, so, I mean, I, I apologize if this seems sloppy, but it's Hunter x Hunter, I do forget things, I have some notes to remind me of stuff, but I do get confused, I know, I know I'm in Whirlpool, and, and it wasn't that great, but still, all right? But still, I think it was okay. It, in my opinion, this overview right now is okay. Uh, I'm just saying. Now, the things that I really liked about this arc, when it came to overall this arc, 
definitely the interaction between Alumi and Isoka. This was funny shit. It was funny shit because it's two of the creepiest motherfuckers ever. Seriously. Like, these guys make the Joker look like a sane individual. Alumi and Isoka are twisted, they are sick, they are just plain creepy and weird. And the way these two interact with each other, cracking jokes, doing dumb shit, like one part where Hisoka is like, hey, uh, is it okay if I kill, is it okay if I kill Killua? And then we see Illumi, he's like, don't you fucking dare. And then his, and then his death aura, or his, uh, yeah, his killing intent surrounds the mountain. And then we see Killua notices this aura, and he bails. And then Illumi's like, oh shit, wait a second. You just set me up. I was like, seriously? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? And then of course, there's that part where we see, I mean, like, like, it was just really good. It was really good interaction between the two. So that was good. Another part that I really, really enjoyed, definitely enjoyed, was, oh man, like I said before, Leorio for the motherfucking win. Leorio was beast. Leorio was hot. Leorio did his thing. Enough said. Nen punch for the win. Now, oh, and of course, there was the Killua scene, where Killua goes in lightning form, and he's running, and he's blazing across the 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 jungle, and all this shit, to run from Illumi, Soka, and the butlers. And the butlers still catch up to him. Yeah, that was good. And of course, the last scene was, in my opinion, the most enjoyable, the craziest, the best. Oh, wait. One more thing. The Pariston and the fact that this fucker knew about it. This was crazy. The moment, Go the moment Gin said, my son will not die, Pariston knew, or he had an idea of the outcome of this election. And I was like, how? How do you know that? And it's just crazy. It's just crazy. The way this guy capitalizes, he straight up capitalizes on opportunities. He bends and twists words. He feeds you ideas. And very well played. His charisma off the charts. Straight up. Very well played. A round of applause for Pariston, son. A round of applause. But guess what? Even bigger round of applause for Beyond Natero. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yo, Beyond Natero was the shit. He was the shit, and the fact that Pariston joined his group in order to venture off to the new world to the Shin Sekai, that is crazy. That's crazy. But I'm really looking for him because apparently the Chimera Ants they came from the Dark Continent, and there was only one queen, one queen. And she gave birth to how many Hellspawn? And they almost took over an entire nation in the existing world. And that's crazy. With one queen. So, God knows what's out there. But what we do know is that humans exist. That's the major portion when it comes to Beyond Tiro and this whole entire thing of the Shin Sekai. What happens here is that during that last chapter... Of this arc, chapter 340, Beyond the Tiro is talking about how he wants to go there. And we find out a lot of stuff about this outside world. The first thing we find out is that apparently magical creatures like the Chimera Ants and other humans, other humans, quote unquote, exist within this world. As such, do very large creatures, uh, amazing plant life like the giant mother tree, like the tree of might on steroids, and so on and so forth. The next thing that's very important is that every time humans from the existing world went to the outside world, a calamity would always return to the existing world. And that's a huge problem, which is why the V5, the five major nations of the existing world, they decided, or they had like a treaty of some kind, and they decided not to ever venture off into the, into the outside world unless you attain Four things, which go mention. I believe those third. I believe those four things 
were a path, a uh, negotiation, permission, like something else. I'm not too sure. And he hasn't attained any one of them. And that's crazy shit. So, clearly, Gid, he wants to go there. Bad. Really bad. But, well, not really, really bad, because he said that he's taking his time with this stuff. He's, he's enjoying the journey. But still, he wants to go there. And the major portion of this is that we see that the Zodiacs, apparently, Gin at the end of the arc, Gin and Pariston, they leave the Zodiac. And apparently, Natero, he had a hidden CD. And this CD was for all the Zodiac members. And it was stated that if someone comes out claiming to be, claiming to be my son, then play this CD. And we don't know where that's going to go on from there. And of course, there was the notion that the V5, they want Natero, they want beyond Natero dead. They want him dead, or with correction, they want to hunt him. So, again, very good stuff. So, in future chapters, we may see the Zodiacs against beyond Natero and his group. Which means that Pariston may have to face his old comrades, the Zodiacs, which would be cool shit. Dude, that would be cool as shit. But I'm really looking forward to seeing this outside world. The way I figure is that the outside world in Hunter x Hunter is kind of like the Gurry world in Toriko, where there's a human world, and then beyond that human world is an outside world. And the outside world is far, is, is far bigger and way broader than the, than the human world. So, I mean, that's why I see it. But that being said, this arc gets an A. This R gets an A. Actually, you know, uh, A minus. Because there is one thing. There is one thing I didn't like. And that was the fact that there was no drawback when it came to a Luka healing Go. There was no drawback. Everything was A-OK. -okay. It was A-OK. -okay. Spot on fine. We're all going to be best buddies now. No drawback. No tens of thousands of niggas dying. No, none of that shit. So... That gives it, that drops it down to an A minus, but still a very good art. So I'll see you guys later. This is the King of Lightning. Rate, comment, subscribe. Peace. Have a nice day. And I apologize if this does seem sloppy, but again, it's a lot of shit. So I'll see you guys later. Have a nice day.